Hello students. In the previous lectures, lecture 1 and 2, I have, I have introduced the planetary boundary layer and we have derived the equation for the planetary boundary layer. Uh, along with this, we have introduced the surface layer equations. Today in this lecture, I shall show the Ekman layer. We shall discuss about the Ekman layer. As already mentioned, Ekman layer starts from the top of the surface layer to nearly around uh, 1 kilometer. This is a layer in which a three-way balance between Coriolis force, pressure gradient force and viscous force occurs. This layer provides a qualitative valid description of dynamical properties of the boundary layer flow which are important for analysis of the um, mid latitude synoptic scale flow. It is not uh, over the tropical region, but in the mi mid latitude uh, flow, it can be represented better with the uh, Ekman layer concept. Now, as we already know, the PBL equations minus F V equals to 1 by rho del P del x you can continue from the previous lectures del del z of tau x by rho similarly the y component will be plus f u minus 1 by rho del p del x plus del del z of tau y by rho so let's say again we are indexing from beginning equation 1 and equation 2 from this equation we have derived the conditions uh, and the u uh, component of the wind for the surface layers but this is the general term above the surface layer these equations are valid Observations indicate that in this region, the characteristic uh, scale of the turbulent eddies is not simply proportional to the distance from the ground. Means earlier we have assumed that, mm, uh, that uh, we so we have uh, earlier assumed that L prime was equals to small k z that means l prime was proportional to z that is the height or the distance from the surface now experimentally it is observed that this is not a proportional instead it is a constant okay so thus in order to simplify the discussion we now introduce an ad viscosity coefficient that is called ad viscosity coefficient k equals to that was the small k that is a constant value now it is uh, capital k we are introducing a z by rho okay where k is called the ad viscosity coefficient okay So here we are considering that this coefficient with the consideration that with height the L prime was is not proportional it is a constant value. Again we know the relation tau x by rho equals to a z the value of tau x is del u del z divided by rho and tau y equals to uh, tau y by rho equals to a z del v del z divided by rho. So if we use this relation and a z by rho is equals to k 
so simply k del u del z here also simply k del v del z so now tau y by rho if we put this here and tau x by rho if you put this here in this equation then what we will get let's see let's see minus f v plus 1 by rho del p del x plus if we put this value here k will be constant del 2 u del z 2 ok equals to 0 so if we simplify it if we take this first k del 2 u del z 2 we are taking minus sorry uh, it will be this will be minus so if we just take this one first minus we are taking minus common from this so plus f v minus We can write like this 1 by rho del p del x and multiplied by f. Okay. Equals to 0. So that we can write k del 2 u del z2 plus f v sorry v minus u g we are replacing this term with u g equals to 0 so this is important equation so similarly for the equation 2 from equation 2 we can also write k del 2 v del z 2 minus f of u minus sorry this was vg v minus vg u minus ug equals to 0 ok so now what is the value of v uh, UG, VG and UG VG equals to 1 by rho F del P del X and UG equals to minus 1 by rho F del P del Y so you have to remember this two term so two equations we are getting these two equation we can give the name of this equation is say 2 and this is 3 now we need to solve these two equation to get a solution uh, for this Ekman layer components of the velocities so it is not a simple procedure so for that some steps are there for simplification Simplification uh, is done with the help of the boundary conditions. Uh, suppose at at height z from the surface, z equals to zero, and at height z equals to suppose a kilo, uh, some kilometer, one kilometer, and it will go up to infinite. So for this type of surface, for this type of surface, let us consider the boundary condition at surface u equals to zero v equals to 0 at z at a height equals to 0 again u equals tends to ug 
v tends to vg at z tends to infinite this two boundary condition we have to use and we have to use the complex velocity component that is u u plus i v where i equals to root over minus 1 so if we sum, uh, use these two equations and make a complex velocity comp component this condition then the equation will become like this k del to i have skipped one step here you can do the z square u plus i v it is coming from the two two equations i f u plus i v equals to minus i f u g plus i v g this equation we will get so for simplicity if we use u g equals to zero and finally I will write uh, the solution of the step what we will get the solution u plus i v equals to minus u g e to the power minus gamma 1 plus i z plus u g where this gamma is equals to a by 2 k okay now if we apply the Euler, Euler formula e to the power minus minus i theta equals to cos theta minus i sin theta and uh, if we separate the real and imaginary part from the equation then we can get the u component of the wind is ug 1 minus e to the power minus gamma z cos gamma z and v component of the wind is ug to the minus gamma z sin gamma z this solution is the famous Ekman spiral uh, solution Ekman spiral solution okay this is called the Ekman spiral solution for the one scientist uh, the name was given the Swedish scientist he was an oceanographer V. W. Ekman who first derived an analogous solution for the surface wind drift current in ocean the structure of the solution is best illustrated by a diagram it is called hodograph so how the hodograph looks uh, I can just do here two axes one is V by ug another axis is u by ug okay point two point four point five point uh, sorry point six point eight and up to one here point two point four point six like this it goes it is looks like this Here the components of the wind velocity are plotted as a function of height. Thus the point on the curve corresponding to u and v for values of yz. So these values and yz values for each and every yz, each and every yz, u and v changes. Why is it increasing as 
so, uh, it moves from the origin along the spiral that means if we see I'll explain this more detail this is pi by 6 this is pi by 3 pi by 2 2 pi by 3 and this is pi so if yz is increasing the values of yz is increasing corresponding to u and v that's why when z equals to the height equals to pi by gamma then if we put it here pi by gamma then sine pi will get the maximum value here it is that means the curve will be like this what does it mean it means that for this condition the wind is geostrophic winds that means geostrophic condition is Coriolis parameter is equal to the pressure gradient force that means the parallel of the x-axis the physical significance of this condition is suppose let us consider a surface the surface is rough surface when some fluids are moving along any direction this uh, along u direction or by uh, v direction the nearest surface which already we have discussed about the surface layer their friction will be more but after that around 30 meters above Ekman layer starts in the Ekman layer the solutions we have got this one but at the condition at a height if we go high z value if it is pi by gamma gamma is already defined f by 2k so if it is pi by gamma then we are getting this line when it is pi that means at a certain height the planetary boundary layer above this height the wind flows parallel to the horizontal that means the Coriolis force is equal to the pressure gradient force that is called the geostrophic balance. So at what height it becomes we have to define a depth. This is called the Ekman layer depth. Depth of the Ekman layer or Ekman layer depth. So that Ekman uh, layer depth is DE equals to pi by gamma. This is the height of the layer at, at which height the geostrophic balance becomes valid so at that height Ekman layer is the upper limit of the Ekman layer so that's why this is called the depth of the Ekman layer so from different different observation it is also observed that Ekman layer value is nearly one kilometer and uh, if we use this the value of F there we can find out the depth of the Ekman layer uh, sorry the value of k this value of k we can find out 